now we are going to discuss mass distribution profile of detached fringe. So, once the comb fringes are detached, it has become a very thin sheet. Now, how the mass of fiber is distributed in this fringe that is what is we are going to discuss now. Detachment is a drafting process as surface speed of the detaching rollers is much greater than the velocity of the approaching nippers. Nippers are holding the fringe and it is trying to move towards the detaching roller nip because we have to detach the cone fringe. So, it is moving forward. So, the fringe is moving forward. Let us say the velocity of the fringe movement is V f and the detaching roller is they are also moving forward at a certain velocity and that speed is let us say V d. Therefore, the detachment dropped Z d can be written as the ratio of V d by V f. Now, the velocity detachment dropped is not really constant as both the velocities changes according to character and adjustment of the mechanisms. Therefore, this ratio that we see V d by V f is not really constant because the detaching roller speed is not constant as well as the, the velocity of the nipper assembly as it moves forward the velocity is also not constant and hence the draft is not really constant. Though there is a, there is a drafting zone in a way, but the draft is never constant. Now, how this draft you can say variable draft is going to affect the mass profile of the fringe. The mass profile of the comb fringe in front of the nippers is always tapered as shown in this diagram. If this diagram if you see this mass profile is always tapered. After combing, we will get a tapered profile in front of the nipper line. See the detachment draft is not constant as we have already said that both the velocities keeps on changing the as that depends upon the way the mechanism has been designed and hence the value as to I told you already. Z d is never constant, but keeps on changing as a function of time. So, a tapered fringe profile is going to change now. If the draft had been constant, the mass profile of the detached fringe also would have been similar to the what existed prior to the entry of the profile in between the detaching roller nib. That means, a tapered profile would have been also tapered had the draft been constant, but because draft is not constant in this combing zone. Therefore, the tapered profile would not remain really tapered once it has been drafted or it has gone beyond the detaching roller nip. That is it has been developed, it has been delivered by the detaching rollers. The other thing which will happen that is the mass profile is not going to be symmetrical that we are very sure and the mass of the fringe will be distributed over a longer length because there is a draft between the approaching nippers and the detaching rollers. What we can expect in a very you know roughly is that if I feed a tapered profile as shown in this diagram left hand side which is moving forward and there is a drafting process the profile shape will change. So, if the draft remains constant, it will give a profile which is similar to the one shown here. Let us say this part and as the nipper moves forward, there is some amount of draft and let us say that draft is constant. When the nipper is moving backward, then also a drafting is happening because nipper itself has changed the direction of movement and therefore, 
the trailing part of the detached fringe will look like this as shown in this diagram. That means, the leading part will look like a thin triangle and the trailing part will also look like a very thin triangle. That means, we will expect that the fringe mass profile will be tapering off on both sides of the fringe. This is a very simplistic picture that uh, we are trying to do describing, but the actual uh, profile may not be exactly like this. But if we feel, or if we assume that while the nipples are moving forward, there is some amount of draft, and while the nipples are moving back backward, there is another draft which is constant. In that case, we will expect the profile to look like this. From there, down you can see that there is a picture, and this picture shows the actual fringe that we have collected on a piece of paper. So, you can see that the fibers, this is the profile of the fringe, this is the leading end and this is the trailing part of the single fringe. And if we get this single fringe, we can actually find out the mass distribution profile of a particular fringe. How we can do it? First, place a paper in between detaching rollers and collect a fringe on it by manually turning the machine. That is, instead of running the machine by the motor, we can first place a suppose a black paper in between the leaf of the detaching rollers and allow the paper to move backwards a bit. Now, we can turn the machine by hand and allow a fringe to be detached and along with the paper. Therefore, the fringe will fall on the paper and if there is a good contrast like in this case, the paper color is black and the fringe color is white. Suppose, we can easily visualize the fringe on this black paper. Now, what we can do? We can cut sections using photographic paper cutter and the interval could be anything between 5 to 8 millimeter, one can go up to 10 millimeter also. So, we can cut these lines are showing that they are at the interval of 5 millimeter. So, or I can have 6 millimeter also or 8 millimeter or 10 millimeter. Typically, the length of a fringe from one end to other end is around 95 mm, 90 to 95 mm. So, if we want let us say at least 10 readings from one end to the other, that means we basically need an interval of 9 mm. So, it could be anything between 5 mm to 10 mm in that interval, we can now cut sections, then take the weight of the section cut and the corresponding paper. That means, we take the weight combined weight of the paper and the fiber along with it, then we remove the fibers and take the weight of that paper. So, a difference in weight will give me the weight of the fiber in a particular section. So, we can number this section, let us say this number I put in 1, then 2, then 3, then 4. So, we go up to let us say maybe n number of sections, n could be 10 or 12, whatever it is. So, we get now arrange the weight in the chronological order and plot them on a graph paper. If we do so, what we will generally see? You can see it in the next diagram. We get a picture as shown here in this. Now, this is the actual mass distribution profile of a detached fringe. And you can see that the shape of the mass profile is very close to bell shape type, thick at the middle and tapering off on both sides. That is the weight is maximum at the center and then it is basically tapering off on the right hand side and on the left hand side. That means, most of the mass is concentrated at the center part of the fringe and the front part the mass is gradually reducing and in the back end also the mass is gradually reducing. Distribution is not really symmetric though you no know, apparently it appears to be symmetric, but actually it is not. 
the leading edge length is little greater than the trailing edge length. Typical fringe length is 95 mm, it could be 90 mm also, 90, 95 depending upon the length of the fiber and uh, the drop that we had. So, but let us say typical the length could be 95 mm and the weight of a single fringe that is this, this whole fringe, the weight could be 300 milligram. That means, every time a fringe is being produced, the weight is around 300 mg, which is distributed over 95 millimeter length, but the distribution is not uniform. This is how we are generating the fringe one after the other as the machine is running. So, the machine RPM is let us say 300, that means per minute I am generating 300 fringes. So, that means per second we are generating 5 fringes. So, in every second 5 fringes are getting detached and they are placed one on the top of the other. The other two diagram that you see at the bottom here, this is the diagram for double fringe. This is diagram for double fringe and this is the diagram for triple fringe. That means, in the double fringe it is basically two fringes which are overlapping on each other. So, what happens that the, the leading edge or the trailing edge of the previous fringe will overlap with the leading edge of the successive fringe. This is how the fringes are overlapping. We go from here to this slide now and this shows that how the character of the fringe changes as you change the piecing index setting. Piecing index setting, there is a setting on the machine by which we can actually change the overlap zone. The purpose of the piecing index setting is to change the overlapped area. How much we are going to overlap? That can be changed with the help of piecing index. By changing piecing index, what happens? The detaching roller movement is also being shown here that how it moves as a function of index number from 0 to 40 and this is how in a typical case it goes like this. That is basically means that detaching roller moves backward first and then it starts moving forward from here to here the forward journey and there it is the backward journey. We all know the detaching rollers move backward and forward, backward journey because we want to really turn back the previously detached fringe and then the new fringe will be coming and falling on it and then both of them will be pulled forward. Now, as we change the piecing index setting, we see that the mass distribution profile is not really same, it is a little changing. So, the distribution of the mass changes a bit as we change the piecing index and that is being shown here how it is changing. We will be interested to know what happens when we change certain parameters with respect to the change in the mass distribution profile of individual fringe. So, in this diagram the influence of feet per nip is shown. So, one feet per nip is 4.8 mm, the other one is 5.6 mm. That means, we are feeding either 4.8 millimeter lap in each and every cycle. In the other case, we are feeding 5.6 mm lap in each and every cycle. So, as we feed more, the production is going to increase, the weight of the fringe is also going to increase. And if you look, compare these two diagram, that is mass profile when you with 4.8 millimeter and mass profile with 5.6 mm. So, that we see the pink diagram is representing the mass profile for 5.6 mm. So, we can see that the excess material is distributed mainly 
on the leading edge, the excess material is here. Here from here to there, the two curves are overlapping on each other. That means, in this zone there is no change. The excess mass that we are feeding is actually getting distributed on the on this side of the diagram. And the other thing is peak location of the peak is more or less similar. See this here is the location. So, this location is fairly at the same place. So, this is the influence of feed per nip. The next one is what happens when you go from one mode of feeding to another mode of feeding that is from forward to backward. How the mass gets changed, mass distribution profile gets changed. If you look at the diagram, nature of distribution is more or less similar, there is not much change, it still looks like a bell shaped curve. On the leading edge, more mass accumulates, the leading edge is this side, so you see this is the extra mass. So, this mass has accumulated on the leading edge and again from here to there, this side there is no change because both the curves are actually overlapping each other. So, whenever there is an excess mass, an increase in weight of fibers in detached fringe means an increase in productivity. So, productivity will increase when everything remains same, if we go from backward feed to forward feed, the productivity is going to always increase. The weight increase in forward feed is 13 percent more than backward feed. If we compare the weight of a single fringe during backward feed and during forward feed, then during forward feed the weight will increase by 13 percent. That is how the, there will be change in weight and the way the mass is distributed is shown in this diagram. From here we go to the next that is to know about the piecing length. How can we find out piecing length? In this diagram, each orange line is representing one single fringe. So, let us say there are three orange lines, this is the first fringe, this is the second fringe and this is the third fringe. The length of the fringe is small l. The overlapping zone is small p that is piecing length and three fringes are placed one after the other and the total length of three fringes let us say that is capital L. So, we can find out from this geometry easily that the value of piecing length is going to be three times length of the single fringe minus capital L capital L is the length of three fringes together divided by 2, this value will give you the piecing length. And here at the bottom we have a table where we could find out that at different piecing index, what is the single fringe length, what is the triple fringe length and what is the piecing length. So, single fringe length remains fairly same as we move little difference of 5 millimeter may be true may not be true because fringe to fringe some variation could be always there. The triple fringe length is close to 150 millimeter and the piecing length if we see measured following this formula we get values 70, 67.5, 70, 67.5 so something like this. So, the values are also very close to each other little differences are there, but on an average we can say we get a figure close to 70, which is the piecing length in a for a given fiber and a type of machine that we had taken to study the this particular phenomena, which is related to mass distribution and the change in piecing length. Now, when uh, this diagram is showing the influence of feed per nip on mass profile of double and triple fringe. 
So, earlier what you have seen is the mass distribution profile of a single fringe. Now, when two fringes are overlapping each other and if we can collect two fringes together or three fringes together and make a study that is we want to know after the overlapping how the mass is distributed from one end to the other end. Ultimately, a comb sliver is basically an overlapped structure of large number of fringes one after the other. That is what a comb sliver is. So, if we look at this on the left hand side, it shows the distribution of weight from one end to other and we can see that there is a peak here, but because of the overlapping how the mass distribution is no more really if you look at any one of this curve, let us say a pink one, then we can see it is no more bell shaped curve, earlier it was all bell shaped. Now, because the two bell shaped curve are overlapping each other, therefore, you can see one peak is here, the other peak is there. And if we from there, if you go to the third one, then this is the one peak, this is another peak, this is the third, third peak somewhere here. So, what we get now is there will be, and if we continue like this, will go like this. That is how the mass distribution will look like when you have n number of fringes placed one after the other and if we collect those fringes and then take the mass distribution, we will get a profile like this. That is, there is some and if we take the middle value, we can say that this is the mean and then the little perturbation that is sometimes it is increasing a bit, sometimes it is decreasing. That is how the mass of the fiber will be distributed in the sliver that we produce from each combing head. That means, the sliver that will produce from the each combing head will not be really uniform. It will show peaks at regular interval and we call them piecing waves. That is what is basically piecing waves. So, piecing wave results in non-uniformity of the sliver, but this is the price we have to pay because the way of combing mechanism you know, has been designed that it is basically an intermittent process where we create fringes and then to make a continuous sliver we have to overlap the fringes one after the other and therefore, we get a sliver, the sliver is not really very uniform. So, the uniformity which was there in the lab or in the sliver in the comb after cutting, that uniformity is completely destroyed by this combing operations. The gain is that we get rid of short fibers, we get rid of naps, we get rid of other impurities which are there in the lab. So, what we need after this is obviously to make the sliver very, very uniform because ultimately what matters for the quality of the yarn is also uniformity. So, with this we close this and for the uniformity part therefore, each and every combing machine has a drafting unit attached to it. Where from 8 heads, 8 sliders that we are going to produce, they will be doubled. Because of the doubling actions, there will be some improvement in the regularity or uniformity of the sliver. So, every machine must have therefore, a drafting unit and the, we know the way the uniformity improves whenever you go for doubling actions. So, that is also not enough. So, what we do? After combing, we go for one more drop frame passage. So, the comber drawing unit really cannot you know, suppress the regularity to the extent that we desire to make a uniform yarn. And hence, one more drop frame passages, passage has to be given. And generally, in that passage, these drop frames will be always having 
auto leveler attached with it. When auto leveler was not there, we used to keep not only one, we used to keep two drop ramp passages earlier in order to improve the regularity. But since now auto leverers are there and we therefore, today we can manage having one drop ramp passage and these drop ramps will always have a auto leveler. So, that any non-uniformity which is still left will be taken care of by the auto leveler drop ramp and with that we will be able to produce a uniform sliver and that sliver will then, then go to the next process which is roofing preparation process. With that let us close this session and thanks.